Wow. It's a very powerful film and we are very lucky to be able to welcome Rory Kennedy, the director of Downfall, the case against Boeing. Please everyone, please give a warm round of applause for Rory Kennedy joining us here. Hi, Rory. Hello from Newport, Rhode Island. We are we just finished watching your film. My name is Kathleen Carr. I'm the executive director of Newport Film, and we're so thrilled that you're joining us this evening. And thank you so much for making this film. What a powerful film that you've made. And just to kick us off, what what was the spark that led you to to even find your way to this film to create this film? Well, first, let me just say um, it's nice to be talking with you, Kathleen, and I'm so happy to be here with the Newport Film. Uh, this is a an organization I've I've been a part of for many years now. I've had the great honor and privilege of showing a number of my films at Newport. So it's really great to be back with you here tonight. And thank you all, all the audience for coming out and watching the film. I so appreciate it. Um, the film premiered at Sundance and we weren't able to share it with an audience in real life. So this is actually one of, I think probably the first real life screenings that have happened with the film. So I'm sorry I can't be there with you all in person, but I'm very happy to be having this conversation with you. Um, so now back to your question, which is, I believe was your question about how this film came to be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What brought you to this film? Yeah, well, I think like a lot of people, I, I um, was following the news when, when the stories broke, both about the first plane crash and then when this, the second plane crash happened and it was, again, a 737 MAX, same manufacturer, same kind of plane, two planes crashing within five months of each other, as Andy says in the film. And eerily similar circumstances, um, I became very curious as to uh, what happened. And, you know, now there had been 346 lives lost. Um, I thought it was, you know, watching Boeing's response to these events, there wasn't a sense that they came out with a deep apology claiming responsibility, this was our fault, you know, we, this is horrendous, deeply apologetic, you know, this will never happen again, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Um, and instead, I kind of saw a little like smoke and mirrors, blaming pilots, not really claiming responsibility. Um, and I felt like there was a lot more going on here than, than, you know, was meeting the eye. So I felt like I really wanted to make a documentary about it. I wanted to understand exactly what happened and help audiences understand that. And I also wanted to, you know, find out who was responsible for this and do whatever I could to learn from those lessons to help ensure that this kind of thing wouldn't happen again. And you know, you did such an exceptional job of taking really complicated information and communicating it so effectively. What, what, how did you approach that? I, I can't imagine. I mean, just there were so many moving parts to this story, and and you broke it down so well. And I just love to know what was your approach to that. Well, thank you. I mean, part of it is, you know. I'm not a pilot. And so I think the things that were confusing to me were also confusing to, to my imagined audience. So part of it was like making it really clear to me. And then in so doing, and, and, you know, I had a wonderful editor, Don Clezzi, and my husband, Mark Bailey was the writer along with Kevin McAllister. Um, so we had a, had a, really fantastic, very smart group of people who were all trying to figure this out and then put it together as a story that would, you know, make sense to audiences. Um, I think the film has kind of an interesting structure to it where the first act, the first 30 minutes is really um, showing the events as they played out and sort of uh, communicating more or less what people knew at the time as they were playing themselves out. 
So the first crash happens and we learn some information between the crashes and then the second plane crashes. And then, you know, we go back into history and kind of help understand the context of what, how, how, how Boeing got to this point and what motivated them to make the choices that they made throughout. And then the third act, we really go back and begin to more deeply understand what Boeing knew when in that same timeline, right? So when you find out in the third act that between the two crashes that there was a Tarum report where, where Boeing and the FAA knew that there were expected to be 15 crashes in the lifetime of this airplane. And yet Boeing and the FAA made the decision not to ground that plane. And you now know Michael Stumo and you know his daughter was on that second plane and that that plane never should have gone up in the air. And you now know that this daughter as well as hundreds of other people have died as a result of a decision that was really motivated by profit and wanting to make more money and not wanting to spend the money to ground the plane while they fix the problem, but let's keep the plane up in the air while we try to figure out the problem. And hopefully another one won't fall out of the sky. And that, you know, and then you really understand the depth of that decision in a way that you could never have really felt it, I think, if it just played itself out in real time. Yeah, it's very upsetting. Um, and, and the way you structured it was so effective um, to, to frame it in that way. And, and the film is you know, it, it's so powerful, it's so well done, it's gonna have an impact. And I'm curious, as a result of your film and the work that you've done, the investigation, piecing this together, what are you hopeful for and what do you remain cynical about? Um, well, I hope, I guess, when people see this film that they, you know, I think, the film starts with people in airports getting off on and off of airplanes um, and kind of the normalcy of, of flying. And I think that that's true for so many of us, not for everybody, but many of us, you know, fly without much regard to safety. And um, when you walk down that jetway, you really feel like this, the, the airlines is going to protect me and the manufacturer of this airplane is going to make sure it's safe. And, you know, the regulator and the FAA is going to make sure that everything is safe about this plane. And Congress is going to do their job so that we're not just driven. These companies aren't just driven by profit, but the public interest is at heart. And, you know, these systems, these these people, these institutions failed us, right? So I think part of it is is I can't, I think what Andy says at the end, which is that you know we have to remain skeptical, we have to keep asking the questions, we 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 have to continue to you know in it, to believe and 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 fight for the these extraordinary journalists like Andy and and you know the amazing congressman who and the real hero of the story, Congressman DeFazio, you know who doggedly chased this story down as well, and and Michael DeFazio, Michael Stumo, who became such an advocate. You know all of these folks came together to help us really understand the depths of this story. And I think, you know, in many cases, these are normal people who, who, are, who are leaning in to questioning and to demanding answers. And I think we need to continue to invest in people like that and do that work ourselves. Um, and then I think, you know, I would ask the audience here as well as you, you know, when you last flew, did you know what kind of plane you were on? Um, yeah. I think anyone? that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, did anyone in the audience uh, know what, which plane they were on last time you did? Over so 
yeah, a few, few folks are raising their hands, Roy, right now. So I think- it, Okay, but it's a different question to find out what plane you're on when you're on it. But when you book that plane, did, ah. did, you, did you research what kind of plane you were on before you, um, you booked that flight? So um, I think it's worth doing that research. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when I'm talking to the, the pilots, uh, many of the pilots who we interviewed for this film, Dan Carey, um, as well as others, and uh, Dennis Tasier, as well as Michael Stumo, others who are deeply invested in this story, you know, they have a lot of skepticism about the safety of the 737 MAX that are up in the air right now. And there's also a good deal of questioning around the safety of the 787 Dreamliner. So I think it's good to understand, you know, what that skepticism is and why and, and why there is that skepticism and to, you know, know what kind of plane you're flying on. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, I, I don't know if you can answer this question, but the, the rage and the lack of accountability, right? Um, and and it, it does seem like it's a pervasive thing that happens time and time again. And um, what was that like piecing this together and not being able to provide that wonderful end of the story where, you know, there's deep accountability on Boeing's part. And um, what, I mean, if you could just speak to that, because it's just such a rageful thing, isn't it? It is. It's it's uh, it's a gut punch, I think, for many people who watch it, and and for some of us who who made it. Um, you know, I think that um, the facts are that three hundred and forty six people lost their lives, um, and you know what DeFazio would say is that this was because of a culture of concealment that was. Um, top down from Boeing um, and from a series of choices that the management uh, made at Boeing. And yet the Department of Justice concluded that people at the top of Boeing were not responsible for what happened. Um, the families were not asked and victims were not asked to participate in the um, Department of Justice uh, case. Um, there was it was very secretive, and there's very little known about it, other than the fact that they concluded, and this was under the Trump administration, that the top echelons of of Boeing were not responsible for this. Um, and you know, the head of Boeing at the time of these events, Mullenberg was asked to leave, he was not fired, he was asked to leave by the board and they gave him $62 million. Um, so none of these folks have faced prison time. I think if anybody who's watching this right now or you yourself or myself, if we killed one person, we'd probably spend the rest of our lives in in prison and, and you know, um, and yet these folks are responsible for the death of 346 people. And as, 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 De, as DeFazio says, you know, it was a slap on the wrist. Yes, yes, it was. Um, Roy, do you have time for uh, one or two questions from the audience? Sure, I would love oh, that. Wonderful. Would it, does anyone in the audience have any questions that they'd like to ask. We have one over here. Here we are. Um, thank you for this movie, it was excellent. Um, a question is, reading between the lines, I suspect you would not fly on a MAX? I personally would not fly on a MAX. I, I would not it. fly on the 737 MAX, no. Okay, all right. I think that is a kind of a very strong um, punctuation mark to end <laughs> uh, um, uh, the conversation about. It, it's very definitive. Um, well, 
Rory, I have to tell you, I mean, this was, it, it's just such an incredible film and it's such a gift that you shared it with us tonight and that we had an opportunity to speak with you about it. And I think I'm speaking for everyone here that we look forward to the impact that your film is gonna have and thank you uh, for making this film. Well, thank you. And I appreciate everybody coming out tonight and um, it's coming out on Netflix on, on Friday. So it helps if you like the film, please help spread the word. If you didn't like the film, then, you know, keep to yourself. <laughs> I think we will definitely spread the film. Well, Rory, take care. Thank you so much. Stay safe and um, come back to Newport anytime. We'd always love okay. to have you. <laughs> Look forward to that. You take care, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you.